Pandemic influenza may well be coming our way. If it does, there will be no one in the community that will be immune from this disease. It is particularly important that we do everything that we can to protect you and that you do everything you can to protect yourselves. In the event of an influenza pandemic, specific personal protective equipment will be indicated when providing care for those people with confirmed or suspected pandemic influenza. In this situation, you may be required to wear this equipment for extended periods of time. Therefore, it is imperative that you know how to put this equipment on in such a way that it remains in place and is comfortable as possible. Key principles to be considered when putting on your PPE include having a consistent sequence so that this can become routine, ensuring your equipment is correctly fitted to provide maximum protection, taking your time to adjust your equipment prior to entering the containment area and at all times being mindful not to touch your mask, eyewear or touch your face whilst in the containment area. The sequence for putting on PPE is as follows. Perform hand hygiene, put on your gown, put on your P2 or N95 respirator mask, fit check your mask, put on your protective eyewear. Refit check your mask, put on your gloves, Stop and check that everything is in place. Now watch as we demonstrate these steps in detail. Before putting on any personal protective equipment, it is essential that you perform routine hand hygiene. This is considered to be the most important infection control measure in preventing the spread of infection and should be performed before and after contact with patients and their immediate environment. The use of gloves does not remove the necessity for hand hygiene. Effective hand hygiene can be performed by either washing with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand hygiene product when hands are not visibly soiled. Hand hygiene protects you and the people to whom you provide care. Prior to performing routine hand hygiene, Remove any jewellery from your wrists and hands. Some facilities may approve the wearing of a single plain metal ring. Therefore, you should seek direction regarding this. Cover any cuts or abrasions with an occlusive dressing. When washing hands, first wet hands, then apply a pH neutral soap and lather vigorously. Continue washing all surfaces of hands and fingers for 10 to 15 seconds. Rinse hands under running water and pat dry using a disposable towel. When using an alcohol based product to perform hand hygiene, dispense the recommended amount onto your hand. Rub the product over hands and between fingers, ensuring all surfaces are covered. Allow the product to completely dry. Protective gowns will prevent your clothes from being contaminated. The gown should be impervious, long-sleeved with fitted cuffs and be able to effectively cover your clothing. When non-impervious gowns are used, such as cloth gowns, a disposable impervious apron should also be worn. Put your gown on one sleeve at a time. Tie off at the neck. Now wrap the gown around your back ensuring all clothing is covered. Tie off the gown securely so that it will not come undone whilst in use. When airborne precautions are required a particulate filter respirator mask is indicated. The P2 mask is the Australian equivalent of the United States N95 mask. Both masks are designed with a high filtration capacity and essentially provide the same level of protection. These masks are significantly different to surgical or standard filter masks. Surgical or filter masks have not been designed to provide a close seal on the face or high level particle filtration. 
Therefore, these masks will not provide effective protection of your airways from infectious airborne particles. Although there are many brands, models and sizes available, there is no one mask that will fit all faces. To ensure effective protection, your mask must be selected for your face and a test performed to determine that the mask passes the fit test. Prior to putting on a P2 or N95 mask, check the mask for visible damage such as tears or holes in the filter material. If there is, discard and select a new mask. When using a flat fold mask, identify the top of the mask. This usually has a flexible bridge. Open the mask to form a round shape. Gently loosen and separate the straps before putting on the mask. Leaning slightly forward, push your chin out and bring the mask up to your face. Place the bottom section of the mask under your chin. Then lift the straps over your head. Make sure that the top strap is at the crown of your head and that the bottom strap is just below your ears. Check that the mask is covering your face from under the chin to the bridge of your nose. Ensure the mask is not too high on the bridge of your nose, otherwise it could interfere with the wearing of protective eyewear. Using your fingers, mold the mask around your nose and cheekbones, making sure the edges are well sealed and fitted against your face. At times, there can be a remaining gap near the bridge of the nose. To remove this gap, stretch your nose by dropping your jaw and pinch the mask around the bridge of your nose. Once this technique is used, the gap is sealed. When fitting your mask, it may be helpful to have a mirror nearby so you can visually check the placement on your face. Every time you put a mask on, you must perform a fit check. This is your way of ensuring your mask is correctly sealed around your face. If the mask is not correctly fitted, there is a potential for exposure to infectious airborne particles. To perform a fit check, take a deep breath in and breathe out. If the mask collapses when you inhale and puffs out when you exhale, and you don't feel any large leaks of air around the edges of the mask, your mask is considered to have passed the fit check. If your mask does not puff out or collapse, or you feel significant air leaking around the edge of the mask, your mask has failed the fit check. You should then check the seals around the bridge of the nose are secure and firm, that the mask isn't crooked, or that it's not bunched or folded under the chin. Once you have done this, refit check the mask. Protective eyewear shields your eyes from direct contact with respiratory droplets and accidental contact from contaminated hands. There are a variety of protective eyewear which can be referred to as goggles, protective glasses, visors or face shields. If you wear prescription eyewear, put these on prior to the protective eyewear. Whenever putting on any type of eyewear, it is good practice to use the arms of the frame. This keeps your hands away from your eyes and reinforces safe practice for removal. Make sure your protective eyewear is sitting securely and is not affecting the fit of the mask. You should refit check your mask to ensure that this has not changed during the application of your eyewear. Wearing disposable protective gloves reduces the potential for skin contamination. Fit the first glove on your hand. Then pull the end of the glove over the cuff of your gown. This will make a tight seal, reducing the potential for contamination of the wrists and forearms. Repeat this for the second glove. You may initially experience difficulty doing this, but with practice it will become easier. Remember, it is important that you do not adjust your mask or protective eyewear or touch your face whilst in the containment area. For this reason, you should stop, take time and check that everything is in place and you're feeling reasonably comfortable.